Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for High Velocity Radio. Welcome to Coach the Coach, helping business coaches deliver more impact in less time. If you're a business coach and want to help more people make more money and own your backyard, go to mybrxstudio.com. Lee, what a fantastic way to cap our week. I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing on a Friday afternoon. This is going to be a marvelous segment. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast, all the way from Austin, Texas, the growth coach, Miss Julie Birch. How are you, Julie? Well, hi, y'all. Y'all say y'all down there, right? I can say (laughs) (laughs) y'all. So, hi, my friends in Atlanta and whoever all is listening. I'm happy to be here. Well, Julie, before we get too far into things, can you share a little bit about your practice? Um, How do you serve people as the growth coach? Oh, wow. Well, a lot of different ways. First of all, I come from a corporate background for the last 20 years. And really what I found that I did in that was develop leaders. I did that every day, and I love to lead a healthy organization. Or if I came into an organization that wasn't healthy, I like to get it to a healthy state. So last year, I kind of switched gears. We call it rewire, not retire. And I decided to invest in my own business. And this is when I stumbled upon the growth coach, which I had heard of for years. They've been around for over 20 years. But I decided to really invest in the growth coach and have this be a part of my business so I can continue to develop leaders. So now the growth coach is a methodology that is philosophically aligned with yours, and that's what you use to help your clients uh, in your practice? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I believe that when business owners go into business, they know that they're going to be wildly successful. They're going to serve their communities. They're going to meet a consumer need. And then sometimes with growing pains, they keep doing what they're doing, and they're really good at making widgets, if you will. But then maybe they grow, and then some disillusionment kind of sets in. They start to grow to a point where it's like they kind of come into the what the heck have I done phase. And that's where I can really contribute the most value to these business business owners. So I help the busy business owner come off the hamster wheel. And as the growth coach says, I help them work on their business, not in their business. They might be serving as a technician in their business. Say a guy's a plumber and so he just is doing a lot of plumbing but he's not really running his business. He's not setting the vision for his business. And he's just on a hamster wheel doing more plumbing. So I help these business owners kind of pull up a little bit, take some needed time to reflect. We do workshop coaching where they're in a room with other business owners that are likely going through the very same thing. And we all learn together as I put them through the growth coach strategic business mindset process. And that involves a time of reflecting. We kind of help them face the reality that is their business, what's working well, what's not. We look at what they're good at. We look at, you know, what they struggle with because not one person is good at everything. We look at where they're investing their time and in what relationships. Are they really focusing on their customers? Are they, are they focusing on developing the talent within their own organization? And then we look at how they're managing their time. Are they spending their time in the right way? Because we help build our business owners, you know, really think more and lead more, but we want them to work less. We want to get them off that hamster wheel. So their time is spent in the right way, focusing on the things that really matter. We call that the vital few instead of the trivial many. And then finally, we put them through a session where we really pull out what is their vision for their company. And are they communicating that vision throughout their company? And also, we have them set goals. And many of you have heard of SMART goals, been around for a long time. But we have them set goals that are meaningful, goals that really are achievable using the SMART goal format. And then as a coach, once that is all developed during the workshop, I hold their hands through the quarterly time period until we meet again, because we meet just quarterly. And then I help them individually 
talk about what they just went through and then how I can help them continue down that path that they've defined. So it's using the growth coaches proven strategic business mindset model. And they're in a group of other business owners where they sort of lean on each other and they kind of develop a wolf pack with each other. And that also reinforces um, the learning that they get during the workshop. Now, for you, was it difficult to make that transition from, you mentioned that you were part of the pharmaceutical industry for many years, to go mm -hmm. from that kind of big mm -hmm. enterprise level organization to these smaller and mid-sized companies? No, it, it really wasn't because people are people. And even in a big organization, a mid-level manager might be, you know, they have their organization, which is essentially like their own small business. So as a, a leader of a large company, I was already managing individual leaders as if they were their own businesses and developing them as it supported the entire organization. Now, so it was an easy transition. So that wasn't difficult. Now, what about mm -hmm. for the person um, that's the business owner? Is it hard for them to kind of raise their hand and say, look, I'm a little vulnerable. I need help here. Yeah, you know, I have to say, you know, in, in a service-based industry like mine, it takes a bit to develop trust. Not everyone wants to say, hi, I'm Joe, and these are all the problems with my business. That's usually not the first topic. But, you know, with leading questions and with developing a relationship, I can usually uncover some pain because all business owners go through it. And heck, I'm a business owner myself, so I can relate to a lot of what they're going through. So when I uncover the pain, then that's where we can start to help each other. And then in the workshops as well, of course, we have the rule that everything that's talked about during that workshop stays there. There's a, a confidentiality that is, you know, kind of understood with the group. And then people, as they hear the others in the group share things that they're struggling with as well, that helps them feel more vulnerable to come forward. And then the there's more cohesion with the group as we move forward. Now, you mentioned these workshops. Are those done in person or is the work mm -hmm. virtual? No, it's done in person. Done in person. Uh, that's really important to have time to be in person, to sit together, and to get these guys away. And I say guys, that's female too. To get them away from the day-to-day -day work. We, we do very beautiful venues. We might do a retreat in a beautiful area or, you know, maybe just a boardroom somewhere. But we get them away from their work and we kind of force them, if you will, to reflect. Sometimes it's hard to, to unglue them from their hamster wheel, but on a quarterly basis, you know, they come together and they really do value that time at the end of the day. They're glad they did it. Now, you mentioned you're in Austin. Are, is, are your clients in Austin or are these people traveling from all over the country to come to see you? No, my clients are mainly in my local area, uh, so I take care of Austin. There's actually two other growth coaches in the Austin area, and we all have our um, territories that we service. So mine is more of the west side, north and west side, and then I swing around to the south side. But yeah, they're, they're local in my territory, local businesses. And then what type of uh, clients are attracted to this? Um, are they service providers? Are they, you know, manufacturers? Or, it, or can it be any small, mid-sized business? It can be any small and mid-sized business, but, you know, we don't limit it to that also. It could be large businesses that are really invested in their people. Um, so the strategic business mindset for the business owner is just one of the growth coach products. There are many, many other products that we offer in our fundamental series, which is really a lot of leadership development. And that's kind of, um, you know, that's my wheelhouse, if you will. I love all of the products, but that's where I feel like I have the most direct experience. So, yeah, any mid-level or even large organization that's invested in their people that really wants to continue to enhance a positive uh, people culture, those are also my clients. And I can come in and do workshops or strategic retreats with them. We do fun stuff with our GC Insights program where we do DISC testing. I don't know if you all have heard of DISC, 
DISC. It's been around for 30 years, but uh, it's like personality testing. But we go, you know, several steps farther. We don't just say, hey, I've learned about myself and I am now a D. It's not just that. It's, it's about the values that drive that personality. It's about how knowing you're that personality, how you function in a team. We can do this on a whole like department or working group and understand the team dynamics and the group dynamics. We can even do benchmarking with an HR department. Say they know they need this particular job uh, filled and here is you know, the skill sets that are needed. I can help them if we do discs on the candidates and I say, hey, Lisa's the one you need. You might like Sherry more, but Lisa's who you need for this job. Those are the insights that uh, DISC gives us and uh, very useful and kind of fun too. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Coach to Coach, helping business coaches deliver more impact in less time. If you're a business coach and want to help more people make more money and own your backyard, go to mybrxstudio.com. Today's guest is the growth coach of Austin, Texas, Miss Julie Birch. Julie, this is my favorite part of the show because we get to talk about me. Uh, right, Lee? This is my favorite part. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, Julie, I do find myself wearing a bit of a coaching hat. I'm not out there in the marketplace uh, selling my services. The people that I try to mentor and support are the people across the country that we've developed that are teamed up with Business Radio X to capture stories like this in, in studios. And, and we've got nine now. We want to to have more, but I do think that our people would be interested, and I'm almost certain that our listeners would be, in the whole sales and marketing side of coaching. So um, if you don't mind, could you tell us a little bit about how the whole sales and marketing aspect of your business works, and then any advice you might have for Absolutely. newer coaches on how to, how to sell, how to, get, how to get the work, you know? Yeah, well, I have learned a great deal on that end because I must admit, while I was in the corporate environment, I was never in any kind of sales role. You know, someone else would go hunt the work for us and bring it back to my group, and then we would execute it flawlessly. However, the marketing piece was definitely a struggle, and I'm sure it is for a lot of service providers and other coaches out there. So, first of all, I feel your pain. It is difficult because, especially in our coaching industry, it, it, there's a trust that has to be developed, and that trust mm. does not happen overnight. The one thing that has really helped me with the growth coach is that when I started, I was actually assigned a coach myself. So I have a coach, and she helps me. And one of the things that she really helped me with at the beginning was all of the marketing. So, of course, what we do is we find the best way, a strategic way to do our networking, and we go to many networking events. Of course, we have found that BNI, Business Networking International, has been a help. Sometimes that's expensive for a new coach as well. In Austin, I don't know if you've ever heard of meetup groups. Meetup is kind of a thing here, and it's free. Uh, however, you know, there are some groups that produce more leads than others. So, of course, it's kind of like dating, you know. At first, you'll have coffee <laughs> with about anybody, and then you, re <laughs> then you refine it and say, okay, only if they kind of, you know, meet this criteria am I going to spend time doing coffee. So you sort of hone where you get the most leads from, and then you have to figure that out. So networking groups, definitely all of the local chambers of commerce. I have asked the, the chamber directors to make introductions for me. That has helped. And going to happy hour events. So at first, you're spreading a wide net. But then uh, when you develop trust and you develop referral partners, that's another angle, then the referrals start to come in. And when I say referral partners, you have to think for your business, who is the, the type of business that's going to come across your potential clients? Well, in my business, that might be CPAs. They might be seeing a struggling business owner. And I don't mean struggling financially, but struggling that they're disorganized or they're too busy to do their books. That's a clue that they might need me. Also, financial planning people. They're also good referral partners. I found realtors, actually, 
are good, commercial real estate people, um, the economic development councils within the chambers. They know about new business coming to the area or starting up. So there's a myriad of ways. Of course, social media is important, but it's not, it, you have to do it, but it's not usually um, a quick uh, sales cycle. And referral partners are a little slower too. But really the networking events and the chambers and BNIs, those are really where I have found the, the most bang for your buck, if you will. Well, well, thank you for that. And I, I appreciate, and I'm going to certainly be in a position to pass on the council on some of the tactical advice of these different kinds of groups. And we have heard of, of, of several of those that you, that you mentioned, like the meetups and, and the BNI. So I appreciate that. But I think mostly what I get from, mm-hmm. from your response is, you know, we need a coach too, uh, or an accountability partner or someone <laughs> to help, right? That's Yes, yeah. right. So, exactly. Yeah. When I know I have a, a meeting with my own coach every Monday afternoon, you know, she's going to ask me, what did you do last week? Was I lazy? Did I decide I just want to sit around in my pajamas in my living room drinking <laughs> coffee? You know, she always says, clients are not going to meet you in your kitchen. They're not going to knock on your door. You know, they always say that, uh, you know, marketing is a contact sport. You've got to get out there. And so sometimes, I'm, here's a little thing about me, I'm actually a closet introvert. So huh. sometimes it's hard for some of us coaches to get out there. I can, you know, use my, I can look like an extrovert often, but I'm a closet introvert. So left to my own devices, I'd love to just sit home and hide behind my computer and do social media. But that's not going to pay the bills doing that. So you've got to get out there, whether you want to or not, have a kind of a strategy. I try to see 10 people or do 10 things a week. Now, those 10 mm-hmm. things could be referral partner business uh, visits. It could be one-to-one. It could be networking events. It could be meetups. But I need to do 10 things a week. That's kind of what I hold myself to. Well, thank you for that. I am so glad that I asked. I, I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Julie, yeah. um, since you've been doing this, can you share any kind of success story or a story that was rewarding for you? Well, you know, with the Growth Coach Proven Process, it is known to increase uh, the revenue, the top line revenue of our clients by 20 to 30 percent. So seeing a client go from being busy and overwhelmed and spinning their wheels and then see them really working on their business, forming a plan, uh, uh, developing their people, doing all of the principles that the growth coach teaches and seeing them come out happier and sort of reclaiming that vision that they had when they started their business, that is what's most gratifying to me. The program absolutely works. And seeing them, their eye, the, the light coming back on in their face where they were so haggard when they started, that's my success story. Now, ha- after working with so many business uh, leaders, have you seen some common mistakes that they all kind of fall into? Yes. Well, the common mistakes I've seen, well, you know, a lot of them, they continue to function as technicians instead of as business owners. So I tell them, your job is to create the most delicious recipe ever, you know, theoretically. And it's not your job to cook that every day. Your job is to set the stage and say, here's what I want you to cook, and then someone else cooks it. So what I see a mistake is, is that they still continue to be in the kitchen and cooking their own thing. And I don't mean cook, you know what I mean, as an analogy. Right, no they matter what, the, to, they're doing the work, but they're not right. kind of building the business. Exactly. So they need to get out of the realm of being the technician. Their job is not to do the job. Their job is to create jobs. So, you know, if you're the middle of the, your whole universe and everything revolves around you as a business owner, it, it, I mean, maybe you are the brand, I get it, but you're, you're hindering your ability to scale. Your job is really to set the business up so it can run on autopilot, to set it up so much that it's push button, because you also have to think of your exit plan. So nobody's going to want to buy a business where you're the center of the universe. 
And at one point, you, you will want to exit. So you want to get your business to where is it sort of like a business in a box. And that's attractive to investors when you do want to sell your business or hand it over, you know, to a child or something like that. But your job is to increasingly make yourself more and more irrelevant because your business is set up to run like a push button. Now, um, if somebody wanted to learn more about your practice and maybe get in contact with you and have more substantive conversation, uh, what's the best way to get mm -hmm. a hold of you? Well, you can definitely call me, and I'll, my website is www.thegrowthcoachgreateraustin. I have lots of good information on my website. My contact info is there. If you forget the Growth Coach Greater Austin, just remember the Growth Coach, and you can find me through there, through their Locate a Coach. Well, Julie, thank you so much for sharing your story today. It was very inspiring, and best of luck in your practice. Well, I appreciate it very much. Thank you for this opportunity. All right. This is Lee Cantor for Stone Payton. We will see you all next time on Coach the Coach Radio.